Don't you just love it when you buy a product that doesn't solve the problem it says it's going to? That was sarcasm. That's what many folks are experiencing with Starlink, the satellite internet project from Elon Musk that was supposed to revolutionize internet access in areas with bad infrastructure. But this past July, customers were reporting speeds of less than one megabit per second. What is this, 2002? Where are all the frosted tips? And yes, satellite internet has traditionally been notoriously slow, especially for the prices you pay. But Starlink was touted as a solution to this, as it uses a constellation of satellites that are much closer to Earth than the satellites used by legacy providers like Viasat and HughesNet. Starlink has advertised speeds between 100 and 200 megabits per second, with latency as low as 20 milliseconds. Fast enough for gaming and video calls, which are applications that often sputter to the point of being unusable over a typical satellite connection. Our own testing we did in early 2021 showed that Starlink did indeed deliver a usable gaming experience. So why are so many people now reporting problems? See, it's like this. Starlink currently has over 3,000 satellites in low Earth orbit, and that sounds like a lot especially when you consider Viasat and HughesNet only use 12 satellites combined. But SpaceX is planning to one day have tens of thousands of satellites in the sky. Why in the world do they need so many when their competitors make do with just a handful? Well, because they're so close to the Earth, their line of sight to the ground is much more limited than far away satellites. To provide truly worldwide coverage, Starlink may need as many as 42,000 satellites at some point. The current lack of coverage, combined with the fact that the satellites themselves are quite small, only about one-fifth the weight of a Honda Civic, means that they simply don't have the aggregate capacity yet to deal with a growing customer base. But just how bad has it gotten in terms of speed? We'll tell you right after we thank War Thunder for sponsoring this video. War Thunder is a free-to-play online military vehicle combat game available on a variety of platforms with crossplay. It features an incredible arsenal of more than 2,000 historically accurate playable tanks, aircrafts, and ships from the 1910s to vehicles still in service today. You'll compete in massive combined arms battles on over 100 major battlefields from World War II to modern environments. And War Thunder's vehicles are implemented with a high level of authenticity and detail, adding a huge amount of depth to its gameplay. Head to the link below and start playing War Thunder for free. You'll also get a free bonus premium vehicle for signing up. From the first quarter to the second quarter of 2022, download speeds for Starlink customers in the United States dropped nearly 30 megabits per second, going from about 91 down to around 63 if we're considering medians. Upload speeds and latency also suffered from more modest yet still noticeable performance losses. Several customers in rural areas complained that the falling speeds meant that they couldn't work effectively at their jobs. And this is after paying 110 bucks a month for the service on top of a $600 charge for the initial hardware setup. Yikes. These setbacks were not only frustrating for customers, but they also caught the attention of the US Federal Communications Commission, which used Starlink's declining performance as a reason to refuse to give the company a grant of nearly $900 million. To be fair, Elon Musk did say that the network would have capacity limits initially, but he indicated the issues would be primarily centered around urban areas, not the rural ones where people have suffered from unacceptably slow performance. However, the good news is that Starlink is indeed continuing to actively launch more satellites and does have approval from the FCC to launch up to a total of around 12,000 of them. And it's not like Starlink is unusable for everyone, since they're still significantly faster than legacy satellite internet services. But still, with the amount of money Starlink charges every month, let's hope that it doesn't scare too many people away before they complete their network. There's still a few spots in the upper atmosphere. I'd, I'd hate to see them go to waste. Thanks for watching this video so much. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Check out our other videos and comment below with video suggestions. Don't forget though, to subscribe and follow. Sometimes you guys do the other thing, but you don't do that one and it really pisses me off.